Okay, so this final repair is spine repair. Spine repair, it's a little bit more complicated. There are more steps to it, but if you follow along with me, I think you can easily do it. So what I'm gonna do first for the spine repair is I need to remove this old spine. So hopefully I can save this label and I can reattach it to the new material that we put over the spine. That way I don't have to worry about um, creating a paper label or going without a label. So I'll cut this part off first and I'll show you how to clean that up later. So the first step for doing that, I have my straight edge and I'm gonna lay it on the edge of the book here and you can see the shoulder of the book, that groove there, that's the edge of the board. So I'm gonna actually be working on the board, so I'll come back from that edge about an eighth of an inch or so. And I'm trying to keep it parallel um, head to tail. So I'm gonna just cut, and I'm, not, I'm pressing hard enough to go through the cloth, but I don't want to cut too far into the board. Um, and that's something that you can kind of gauge as the more you do it, you can um, sort of get a feel for it when you've cut through the cloth. But usually, if you swipe about twice, that's enough to get through the book cloth. It's really pretty thin. And then I'm just using my knife or my thumbnail. I'm going to peel it up. And half of my spine is already removed. So I'll repeat that on the other side. Again, up on the board and back from the edge about an eighth of an inch or so. And I should be able to just kind of pull it away. So I'll show you how to clean this up a little bit later. For the time being, I'm gonna set it aside. So what you can see here at the head and the tail are what's called the turn-in. So when the book was covered, the book cloth was turned in around the edge of the board, and that's what you're seeing there on the spine. So we want to remove that little turn-in as well. One easy way to do that is to just try to get your scissors in there Cut one side, and then you can more easily see the other side and cut it away. I'll do that on the other end. We just don't want this extra material in there when we attach our new spine, um, causing extra material to, it, it kind of would restrict the book. There's, there's extra material that we don't need in there, and. Um, it creates a thickness there. So in this case, for the most part, this spine material is pretty well attached. If it isn't, if there are loose parts, you can remove those first. If it seems stuck down pretty well, then you can leave it in place. The rest of it seems pretty secure, so I just have mostly that, the loose bits. Okay, so the next step is that we want to figure out the width of our spine. In order to do that, I'll just use my ruler. And I'm really just under an inch. I'm gonna call it 15 sixteenths. So, don't know if you can see in the camera there, but I'm just short of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is make a new spine card. Apart from that spine that I showed you earlier, the back of it, there's a piece of paper there. We're gonna make a little bit thicker card that's gonna line that spine. This gray card, um, again, I'll have all of the resources available for you at the end, um, but this gray card is, an, is kind of a heavier uh, card stock. It's, quite similar to the weight of a manila folder, and if you didn't want to buy this material, a manila folder would be a cheap alternative. Obviously not as archival as this, but it's a good second option. So what I want to do is I want to mark that thickness of the 15 sixteenths to get the width of my spine here. So I'll 
just make a little tick mark at either end. And I want to point out, um, before I cut this, gray card and book cloth, any of the materials that we use in making a book, they have a grain to them, just like how wood has a grain to it. Whenever possible, you want the grain of your materials to go parallel to the spine. The reason is if the paper inside um, is parallel to the um, spine, then as the book is exposed to moisture, the paper can kind of expand out and contract as it dries. However, if it's against the grain and the grain runs this direction perpendicular to the spine, then as the book swells, it wrinkles. And you'll see that a lot of times in the center of a book. If you see where it's really wavy in there, likely the paper is wrong grained. And you can tell by flexing the paper. You can see if it's easier to bend this way or easier to bend that way. And actually, as I'm doing this, it feels like this paper is wrong grained. So if this were to get exposed to moisture, probably we would see some warping there in the spine area. So whenever possible, whether we're talking about the spine material or the cloth or the pages inside, we try to run the grain parallel to the spine. And in this case, it runs this direction. A lot of times I'll draw a line on my page just to remind myself, or if I cut away one part and I'm not sure what grain it is, then with these marks, I have a good reminder for myself. But you can tell by Again, bending the material. As you bend it, if you bend against the grain, it resists you more. If you, bend, if you fold with the grain, it's easier to fold. So again, I have my tick marks here. I'm gonna go back to that step. Line it up. I'll use my knife. So now I have a spine card that is the width of my spine. However, it's obviously too tall. So what I want to do is I want to make my spine card the exact height of my book boards. The spine itself is actually a little bit shorter than the boards. Um, and the boards extend, as you can see here, um, about an eighth or three sixteenths larger than the text block to sort of protect it. So you want to cut your spine card so that it's the height of your boards. So I'll lay it on top of the board. Make a little tick mark there. And again, I like to use my, the lines on my mat to help me cut it square. So I line up my tick mark with a vertical mark and the side of my card with a horizontal line. Line up my ruler with those vertical lines. And now I have a spine card the same size as my book. So the next step is we want to cut a piece of book cloth for the spine. And I have a piece of um, cloth that is quite similar in color, so that's what I'm going to use. You could really use any kind of cloth for this, but book cloth is ideal. It's a little bit sturdier than your average cloth. So in this case, this is a starch filled cloth. It's um, kind of got a more plasticky feeling to it. Almost feels like it's got a plastic coating. But book cloth also comes paper backed and that gives it another layer of support as well. So obviously my, my book cloth is way taller than I need it to be. I really just want it to be about an inch bigger at the head and the tail. So I'm gonna make a little tick mark for myself so that I can see that I have enough extra material. And again, I'm gonna use the lines on my mat. To help me cut 
cut it fairly square. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now it's a good height for the book, but I can see that it's wrapping around the book a little more than I want it to. I don't need it to come onto the book that much. So I'm gonna cut it back Looks like what I need to cut is maybe about an inch or an inch and an eighth off of one side of it. So to make this a little easier, I'm going to see what I'm working with here. So it, about three inches wide looks like it'll be right for the thickness of this book. That's a much better fit, as you can see. So I have my piece of spine card, and I'm going to attach that to the center of my cloth. So I'll get my piece of waste paper. I have my brush in the water over here. So I'll dry that on my cloth. thin layer of adhesive and just to the best of your ability center it on the cloth head to tail side to side try to get that in place I'm just rubbing it down if you want to get a little extra pressure, use your spatula. Make sure you have really good contact. You don't want it to separate from that cloth later. All right, so I'm going to do a little preliminary fold. I'm going to fold up at the bottom and at the top. And I'm going to do the same on the sides. I'm just kind of holding down the card, but creasing the book cloth. It's just going to help it wrap around the book a little bit easier, and it's also going to help us with a measurement. So on the book, as you can see, the edge of the spine is here, the beginning of the board is here, so there's that space in between for the shoulder, and I want to allow for that when I attach my book cloth. I want to make sure that I have a space for that shoulder out from my spine card. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out what that distance is, and it looks like it's about 3.30 seconds. You can really sort of eyeball this. As long as it's close, it will work. Actually, I take that back. Yeah, it's an eighth of an inch. I was reading the wrong side. Sorry about that. So you can just sort of mark an eighth of an inch. And then where I have those tick marks, and I'll show you why we're doing this in a minute. And you can do the same for the other side. For the sake of speed, I'm going to just eyeball it here. So now I have a line on either side letting me know exactly where that shoulder is going to hit. Also, we did that preliminary fold. And I'll draw that on here so you can see it a little better in the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these lines to figure out how to cut a little bit of a, in sewing I would call it a dart, but basically you're, you're cutting a little wedge of the material away so that you have less bulk when we fold this in later. So the way I'm determining it is I'm going to start at the center of that shoulder space. So that eighth inch, I'm going to start at the center of that. However, I want to come down from the line that is my turn in. I want to come down from that maybe 
an eighth or so. So I don't know if you can see, I'm at the center of this and I'm about an eighth of an inch back from the fold. So that's gonna be the top of my triangle. And then I'm just gonna cut kind of a skinny triangle out of my cloth there and another one over here. Might actually be easier for you to see if I go ahead and cut it. So again, I'm gonna stay away from that line. I don't wanna to get too close to it. And you'll see a little bit later why we're doing this. But we're creating a tab, creating three tabs actually. This will fold in and then the others will fold around the boards later and I'll show you that. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end, center of that shoulder space and about an eighth inch or so away from the fold line. Once I have my darts cut, my narrow triangles, then I'll get my waste paper back again. And I'm just going to glue out the center tab on each end. And I'll turn it in down onto that spine card. Your other tabs, as you can see, are gonna kind of stick up a little bit. And that's where we didn't go all the way to the fold with it, that's why they're sticking up. But that will help us later. So the second one is glued out. paper and now we're just about ready to attach this so you can see it's the height of my spot it's the height of my covers there and these little turn ins are going to wrap around the cover and I'll show you how to do that um, what you want to do first I'll get another piece of scrap paper here I'm gonna glue out one side first, and actually before I do that, you may have noticed when I held this around the book that I'm just about bumping into the title there and these decorative lines. In order to avoid pasting over the title or if this were a book that had a picture on the front, um, what you can do is actually lift this cloth and um, adhere it under it instead of over it. So your spatula tool comes in handy again and I'm just gonna slip right under there. Most books, it's just as easy as it looks. It's gonna pop right up. Some books you'll find it's a little more difficult to get in there, but um, just takes a little patience. And I went back probably about an inch, depending on how much overhang you have. You just wanna make sure that it will tuck up under there once you're ready for that step. Okay, so back to the pasting out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paste, I'm not gonna um, paste on the card itself. I wanna keep that dry. So I'm gonna start right at the edge of it and I'll paste just down this side. I'm not gonna worry about pasting out the tabs yet, just this part here. filming next to a window and I can hear the birds singing outside. I hope that you can hear them in the video. Harbingers of spring. Okay, so I have that part pasted out and what I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure that I have my spine lined up at the head and the tail with the book 
and I'm going to slip that part underneath the book cloth, the part that I just pasted out, so I can kind of lift up the book cloth and place it in there. And I want to make sure that I've got my spine in the right place, head to tail. Once I'm pretty sure of that, and left to right, I can tell that my spine card is right on my spine. Then I'm going to go ahead and press that down. I'm even going to use my thumb to go into the shoulder there, try to get it adhered. Once you're pretty sure you've got it stuck well, now I'm going to apply adhesive. And it's easiest to apply to the back of this flap instead of trying to apply it down here. And try to make this a light coating. If you get too much glue here, it's going to squeeze out onto your book cloth. This starch filled cloth is pretty forgiving and you can wipe it, the glue away while it's still wet. But some book cloth is not so forgiving. Once you have it pretty well, I'm going to start back here, work towards the spine. Looks like I've got a little bit of debris under the edge there, so I'm going to put that up. Again, the starch filled cloth is pretty forgiving. I'm going to use my spatula to make sure I've got good contact there. Run my thumb down that groove one more time, and now I'm going to flip over and do the other side. Again, I'm just gluing out that center section, and I'm avoiding getting it on the gray card. I don't want to glue the card to my spine. And that the reason again for not gluing it to the spine is that it helps the book flex open more easily. If I glue the gray card to the spine, the book doesn't want to flex as easily. So having that hollow space in between the two helps us. So again, I'll lift that cover. Got to secure it there and press it down. Again, I'm just kind of using my thumb, running it down that shoulder, head to tail. And you can see we haven't obscured the title, which is nice. So again, I'll some adhesive on the back of this flap, trying not to get it too heavy so we don't have glue gushing out everywhere. And again, I'll smooth down. Where I have a little extra glue, I'll just use my cloth, use my spatula, to make sure I have good contact. You can see where a little extra glue has come out. I'm just going to use my thumbnail, go back with my cloth. Okay, so the spine is now attached and I have these little tabs. So the way that we're going to deal with those, I'm going to fold this over so I don't get glue where I don't want it. I'm going to hold on to the text block and let the covers flap open and I'll put a little glue on each of these tabs. And then I'll just wrap them around. So now you can see where we cut those triangles, why we did that. So it will um, go on either side of the spine, but it won't adhere, it won't impede the opening and closing of the book because it's back from that edge. Try to make sure you don't have any air spaces in there. If you want to 
use your spatula to make sure you've got good contact. Then I'm going to swing it around, do the same on this side. These are wanting to pop up. And now you have a nice secure spine, fully adhered. Your book is practically good as new. So remember that spine that we pulled off. So what I want to do is I want to, as our last step, use this label. So I have an old call number down here, and in this case, this book is a discard, so I may not necessarily want to attach the whole label. If that's the case, you of course can cut the label shorter, um, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and try to save all of it. So it's a pretty simple process. I'll get my straight edge again. Oops. I'll lay it down. And I'm going to try to avoid cutting any of the text or image that might be on the spine using my sharp brick blade knife. And I'll do the same. It looks like I have a little bit more, well, no, that G is pretty close there. So I'll try not to cut much of it but I may get the little edge of it there. And the top and the head and the tail, I'm going to just cut away some of this material that's more ragged. And that's really just an aesthetic decision and it will help it stick down a little bit better. So you can see that there's spine paper on the back. Oh, that never ever <laughs> pops out that easily, but of course it did in the video. So, but you want to try to peel it away. So if it's stuck down pretty well, just scrape at it a little bit. You can also get it wet. Um, this, is, this will get kind of pulpy when it gets wet and you can use your scraper and scrape it away. We got lucky though. So you wanna make sure that you have it facing the right direction. And I also want to make sure that it's not too wide. I don't want it to go around the edge of that spine onto the shoulder because as the book is shelved and removed from shelving, that's going to catch. So I'm going to actually try to take a little more off. It's going to cost me part of the author's name there, but in the long term, I think it will keep our label in a little better shape. Let me do a little bit more on this other side. As little as I can get away with here. So I'll put another piece of waste paper. I'll put my spine face down. I want to do a thin but good coat of adhesive on the back there. Again, making sure that I've got my book facing the way I want it to. And this is kind of, I'm eyeballing it kind of trying to get it centered on the spine there. Might help to lay it down. That way you can provide a little more pressure. 